Hello everyone, we are group 7 of Professor Vendrosko's Geology 12 course. My name is Ty. I'm Kobe. I'm Sean. And I'm Tyler. Our group will be going over the topic of convection and oceanography. We will also break down convection into what it is and why it occurs. We'll cover the aspects of convection in the Earth, Earth's atmosphere, and also in Earth's oceans. Hi guys, I'm Ty and I'll be starting us off with explaining what convection is. Convection is the movement of fluid as it is affected by an increase or decrease in temperature, density, and composition. More specifically, it's the vertical movement of the fluid due to, to the heat source below it or the cooling source above it or vice versa. Take this example of air over fire. The fluid in this case is the free flowing air particles. As the top of the flame builds up temperature, the air particles above this heat source move vertically in a rising column. You'll notice that this is the start of what we call the circulation cell. As the air particles reach the peak layer of the cell, they move outwards, some to the left and some to the right. They travel along this horizontal peak until sinking back down at the outer side of the cell. These outward falling columns of the circulation cells have a lower temperature than the center rising column. The air particles here are at the lowest heating layer of the cell where they move horizontally towards the rising column before repeating the process. This is the main concept of convection broken down into its bare bones. There's a difference in temperature, hot fire, cold air, a moving fluid, a rising and falling column, and layers of the cell where cooling and heating occur. Let's look at the textbook definition of convection. Convection is defined as vertical motions in a fluid caused by temperature or compositional changes that alter the density of parts of the fluid. We covered the aspect of vertical motion as well as the temperature, but what we didn't cover is density. I'll elaborate density more on the next slide. The text goes on to mention that continuous increasing and decreasing temperature at opposite fluid layers are what establish convection cells. The top layer, or where the fluid finds equilibrium, is where the fluid will spread outwards in a horizontal motion, cool down, dense, and sink back down. This completes the circulation cell cycle. Convection cells are the reason there is movement in the Earth's plates, the ocean, and also the atmosphere. Like we mentioned earlier, convection occurs in any fluid, so that can be air, water, and even liquid rock, such as the asthenosphere. Within these convection cells, we can see the diagram marks convergence at upwelling, meaning where the air came together towards that vertical column, and divergence at downwelling, where the air spreads out at the peak of the cell. We should also note that between two adjacent circulation cells, the convergence and divergence alternate, so there's this pattern all along the columns of the cells. To wrap up this section, let's break down why convection occurs. When a fluid is in between a heat source and a cooling source, the fluid will rise with the higher temperature and sink with the lower temperature. Now this is because of the fluid's density. As it gets heated from below, the density decreases and the fluid rises on up. As it gets cooled from above, the density increases and the fluid sinks back down. As long as there's a difference in temperature and density within a fluid, circulation can repeat. This wraps up why convection occurs, so let's now hear from Tyler, who will cover convection inside the Earth. Thanks, Ty. The first example of convection occurs beneath our feet, within the Earth itself. But why is there convection inside the Earth? Convection inside the Earth is driven by the Earth's core, specifically by its immense temperature. It heats up the bottom layer of rock in the mantle, causing its density to decrease. Thus, through buoyancy, this rock begins to make its way upwards. It's not solid rock, however, as the Earth's core is so hot that it melts this solid rock into molten rock, and thus it flows. This molten rock then makes its way upwards through a zone known as the asthenosphere, which is fluid and allowing rock to flow. By the time the rock has risen up to the solid lithosphere, it has cooled significantly, causing it to become more dense. As a result, it sinks back towards the Earth's core, where it gets reheated and the cycle of convection within the Earth begins once more. Now that we know more about convection inside the Earth, what are some of the effects it has? Convection inside the Earth is responsible for the shifting land masses over the past millions of years because it is a driving force behind plate tectonics. The lithosphere is divided into several different places as a result of this convection within the Earth. This is because in locations where molten rock is rising into the lithosphere, it spreads out in different directions. The solid lithosphere can't exactly stretch, so it breaks into separate pieces, also known as plates. The molten rock's upward force into the lithosphere also contributes to this split. This is illustrated cleanly in the image to the right. 
The image also depicts that plate movement mirrors the movement of the molten rock floor beneath it in the asthenosphere. Thus, as a result of the movement in, of the convection cells, areas where molten rock is flowing upwards have a divergent boundary, as the plates are, and rock are moving apart, whereas areas where rock is falling back down to the Earth's core have a convergent boundary, as the plates and rock are moving towards each other. Thank you, and now I'll be passing it on to Sean, discussing convection in the Earth's atmosphere. Hi everyone, I'm Sean and I'll be presenting convection in the Earth's atmosphere. The important thing to know about convection in the atmosphere is the heat that is um, heating the air is coming from radiation from the sun. Now this heats both water and land as well as the air. Now the molecules of air are going to be dense and cool at first and uh, as it heats it expands and becomes less dense and becomes a rising thermal. As it rises, it also becomes less dense due to adiabatic expansion, which is when air will uh, expand due to decreased pressure. Due to the Coriolis effect, more heat will be transferred to the oceans at the equator, and this in turn releases heat to the atmosphere from the oceans. The rising air will create low pressure systems, and if there are low pressure systems and water is present, then the cooling air will cause the water in the air to condense, and it, so it will rain. Uh, this heated air will also make its way in the direction of the poles, releasing its water along the way. By the time it reaches the poles, it is dry. The air at the equator is going to be replaced from air from higher latitudes, so you can see how it is just a continuing cycle. The air goes up, air comes down, it all makes its way back. So the Coriolis uh, effect also creates three cells in each hemisphere. These cells create the trade winds and the westerlies. So surface winds in the feral cells are deflected to the east, creating the westerlies. In Hadley cells, surface winds move from the northeast in the northern hemisphere and from the southeast in the southern hemisphere, between 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south, creating the trade winds. This all keeps air and heat moving throughout the Earth's atmosphere, which gives us our weather and uh, all our surface waves, everything. Uh, at the equator, you're going to have low pressure belts, which are called the doldrums and you have the subtropical high pressure belts. So with this, we've covered convection in the earth and also in its atmosphere. The last part you'll hear is from Kobe who will be breaking down ocean convection. Hey guys, Kobe here and I'll be explaining convection in the earth's oceans, AKA oceanic convection. Oceanic convection requires these natural variables, the wind, the sun, water, and deep water currents. Now you might be wondering, how does each of these natural variables create oceanic convection? Well, let me explain to you the very interesting cycle. To begin, when the sun hits the surface of the ocean, it begins to warm that part of the ocean, which causes the warm water to lose density, which in turn makes the warm water rise to the surface. When the warm water hits the surface, the wind begins to push the water, and the water follows the direction of the wind. After the water begins to cool down, it drops to the bottom since when water is cold, its density grows. Then the deep water currents begin to push the cold water towards the warm water. But for starters, let me give you a brief explanation on how deep water currents are created. The deep water currents are a result of the cold water going down to the lower part of the ocean, which pushes water towards all directions since cold water, like I said before, has a greater density. When the deep water currents push the cold water, it begins to warm up, and the process begins all over again. The end result of the oceanic convection is a global circulation of the ocean water, and also we get our ocean currents. And also, depending on the direction of the wind, it would create an upwelling and downwelling, because upwelling brings the good nutrients from the deeper water closer to the surface of the water, and downwelling helps ventilation, which helps the fertilization of plants under the water and also the movement of the marine life. These are the prime factors that will help our marine life continue to thrive. With this, we've wrapped up the focus of convection within the Earth's oceans. All these aspects of convection are present in the world we live in. Without the presence of convection, our atmosphere would be without the wind belts that blow our oceans and create storms as well. The presence of convection in Earth's oceans allows for the movement of current and the sustenance of our marine life. 
We hope that this video could educate you on the fundamental aspects involving convection as well as the understanding of why it's so important in Earth's functions. Thank you for watching.